hello everyone welcome to my channel suraj in cloud and in this episode of eks tales we are going to see how we can set up ssm access uh, for our eks node uh, which is much better than ssh now one of our subscriber uh, asked this question about how we can set this up so this video will cover the setup how you can use it and when you will need to use it right so let's quickly dive into it before we go further i checked my youtube analytics and 85 percent of the viewers were not subscriber so yeah if you are watching the video hit the subscribe button thanks <laughs> so ssm what is ssm really it is called session manager and it is the utility of aws system manager with which you can establish a stage session with any ec2 instance in aws with the help of ssm <coughs> you don't need to open any inbound port such as in the case of ssh you may have need to open the 22 port uh, we don't need to maintain any bastion host uh, previously if our instance were in private subnet we need to uh, host a bastion host in the public subnet uh, to access the instance <clears throat> we also no longer need to manage any ssh keys managing ssh keys was a real hassle which uh, we no longer need to do how it works it works very fairly straightforward and simple as a user <clears throat> you either access uh, ssm console or you can access via aws cli which we will see in the demo which goes through the all ssm magic and it access your ec2 instance now in this diagram you can see there is a ssm agent written in the ec2 instance and what that means is <coughs> SSM agent is run needs to be running on your EC2 instance. Now we will see what this SSM agent is as well. Uh, but just a note, if you are using Amazon Linux, uh, SSM agent is pre-installed. But if you are using any other operating system, you may need to install this uh, SSM agent manually. So we were talking about SSM agent. SSM agent is a open source project uh, hosted on GitHub. So if you are not using Amazon Linux, you can download the binaries and system D units from here and add it uh, into your operating system that you are using. Now there are various ways to run it. Like you can run it in a container as well. You can run it on a system uh, as a system D unit as well totally up to you <clears throat> and since it's a golang project the binaries are available for all three uh, mac os windows and linux as well and all sorts of architecture <clears throat> few other benefits of uh, having ssm is you can manage the control uh, via iam which will be centralized as opposed to managing bunch of ssh keys and if you want to revoke the access it's easy because it's all in iam itself you can enable port forwarding as well for a particular instance if you want to debug something you can access from any platform because all you need is either ssm in the aws console which runs in the browser or you need aws like a tool uh, which can run on any of these platforms it also supports uh, Windows, Mac and Linux node on EC2 machine itself. As I said, SSM agent is uh, written in Golang and like you can make it for any platform. Because of this, we don't need to maintain uh, any sort of SSH client or RDP client on our machine. And another plus point is we can log everything and we can audit everything that for every session established with the help of ssm manager 
now because this episode is part of eks tells and we are talking about eks nodes this will work <clears throat> only in terms of managed nodes where you will use eks optimized amis which has amazon linux and ssms pre-installed or with the help of self-managed where you can bring your own emi as well but you may need to install your own ssm agent but it won't work with Fargate. In previous episode, we discussed the differences between managed, self-managed and the Fargate, right? So as Fargate is a micro VM itself and we can't really access underlying operating system, so we cannot use SSM with Fargate. <clears throat> now, as we already discussed on any operating system, you can either do it via console in the browser itself or AWS command line tool. Along with this, all we need is at, attach this policy to the role uh, which, uh, which EC2 machine is having. The policy name is Amazon SSM Manage Instance Core. Now, this policy is already defined by AWS. We just have to attach to our IAM role. <clears throat> now, this will be the command, but we'll see in the demo itself, right? So now we can quickly jump into the demo and see how it will look like. <clears throat> so I'm in the EC2 uh, EKS console. I have this cluster, but I don't have the node uh, up and running. So let's quickly add a node group. Uh, I'm already using a managed node group and the node group will have EKS node role which we will see what this role has. Uh, spinning up the node group takes some time. So we'll spin it up and then we'll go back to the IAM. Okay, so I'll keep this and I'll add three nodes. Next, next, and let's create it. <clears throat> Okay, so our node group is in creating. Meanwhile, let's go to the IAM console and see what the role has. Now, this is the role, EKS node role, right? And I have attached Amazon SSM Manage Instance Core policy, which is predefined to this role, okay? Now, if we look into this policy, which is predefined, it has all the SSM permissions which are required to establish the SSM session, right? And from user perspective, now I'm acting as a admin user, so I will have all the permissions, but uh, there is a document available in the system manager which says how you can set up minimal permissions for the users uh, to establish the session using SSM. Now, our node group is coming up. Meanwhile, we can also explore the system manager. Now, in the system manager, on the left-hand side, if you scroll down, under node management, there will be a session manager. Now, if you click on that, we will see a sessions, session history, and the preference. Now, if we go under preference, you can add KMS encryption as well for all the sessions. You can also add CloudWatch logging. With this, what will happen is all the logs from the instance, when a user access the instance via SSM, all the logs will go to CloudWatch and all the audit will also go to CloudWatch. Alternatively, you can send logs to S3 as well, and you can set up some defaults in the uh, shell as well, right? Like once you access the uh, instance, some defaults you can define over there. In the session history, you'll be able to see all the users and which thing they accessed, right? And this is the session. Now, hopefully our node is up yeah it is active now when you spin up a node <clears throat> in the eks they are nothing but ec2 instances right so if we look at the ec2 there are three ec2 nodes right 
and status check is initializing so let them pass and then we'll see how we can access ssm right so there are multiple places from which you can access these nodes okay so under the node group you'll be able to see all the nodes and if we click on it it will redirect us to the ec2 instance right so either you can go from here to the ek uh, ec2 console or we can just jump on to the ec2 console now to connect to a particular instance you can just select an instance and then click on connect now there will be various methods to connect but we'll go via session manager and if you click on connect in the browser if you see i will get a shell access to that particular instance now if i do sudo docker ps i will be able to see the containers which are part of cluster because i'm not running any workload so as you can see there is some cni pods q proxy and the core dns right uh, also if we look at a system d unit called amazon ssm agent you'll be able to see uh, this is the agent and it is running few binaries which we saw earlier right so that's how you can access the ec2 machine from there now on other hand side as i said there are various ways to access you can go to session manager console as well and click on any session that you want uh, based on the instance id and then you can click on start session and then you will get the access to that machine right <clears throat> uh, and the machine is based on amazon linux now this is how you can do it from the console now i am interested in how we can do it via cli because most of the time we'll be interacting with the cluster via cli right so for example this particular node i want to go to so what i will do is i'll simply copy the instance id and go to my terminal and type this command as aws ssm start session hyphen hyphen target and paste the uh, instance id and now i have the shell access to that instance right i can explore all those things <clears throat> and i can see the agent configuration as well basically whatever you can do it from console you can do the same thing via cli tool as well and as i said all you need is aws cli command one thing i didn't mention is by default aws cli don't have this sub command called ssm but you will have to install that uh, plugin or sub command separately now in the documentation of the system manager you'll be able to find uh, the section where it shows install the session manager plugin you can install it on linux windows and mac os all of these right now i'm on mac os so i followed all these steps now one thing to note here is it says along with the aws cli you will also need python 2.6.5 or later or python 3.3 .3 or later right so if you don't have python the python on your machine the aws ssm won't work so python is the one of the requirement and once you install you can verify it as well if it is working properly and how you can do that is simply run session hyphen manager hyphen plugin and it will say installed successfully right 
so we saw how we can do it from the console we saw how to install the plugin we saw how to access the node from cli now let's take an example where where you will need this kind of thing right so as a user let's see there are three nodes yeah now as a user you will deploy some application right so in my case i will deploy a nginx image is nginx and it will have let's say three replicas okay <clears throat> now all the pods are in creating and they are running right now what happened one of the node one of the pod sorry is not working properly okay and it is throwing us some error that there's something to do with networking on underlying node okay now you want to go on to that node and investigate what's really happening okay now if you know the id of the instance from the console you can just copy and use it right but now you are in this kind of scenario so how will you go forward with this right now we know that this pod with the xkkf4 is having the problem so what we will do is kubectl get pod hyphen o wide which will tell us the node where that pod is running this right now we will describe on that node describe node and less right and now in this output we will search for provider okay so if we look at provider id key it will show us the region and the instance id and we are interested in in instance id from that now we can again run this command aws ssm start session target oh. space target now we have access to that machine and this is where our nginx pod is running and then on this node we can do some next investigative task or like troubleshooting task right so this is how from your cli using kubectl tool you can figure out the instance and uh, establish a session with that instance for next troubleshooting and debugging stuff right so this is how we we saw in this session that how we can uh, enable the ssm for our eks nodes how we can establish a session from the console or using aws cli and we also saw a use case where you want to go on to the pod because a uh, node because particular pod is not running and maybe something is wrong with that node so hopefully with this uh, episode you'll be able to set up the ssm for your cluster and uh, manage the access for ssm into your nodes so hopefully uh, you learn something and uh, do check out other videos from the eks tell series from to learn more about eks and if you want me to cover any of the eks topic uh, do let me know in the comment section as well till then goodbye